Please remain standing as we do the scripture reading. Today's passage comes from Matthew chapter 14, verse 28 through 32. Uh, we will take turns reading. I will read verse 28. And Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Let's read those two together. And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And then this is where the Lord will speak to God. Please be seated. And let's take this time to greet each other one more time. It's good to see you in the house of the Lord. Let's greet each other. Uh, okay. uh, we're going to have a time to welcome our freshmen. But freshmen, if you can raise your hand. Yeah. Let's give them a big round of applause. Let's welcome them. <laughs> okay. Freshman, don't be shy. Today is your day. Uh, we, we're going <laughs> to welcome you, and uh, we're going to have a lot of fun today. Uh, so I hope you guys have fun, too. Uh, so uh, uh, today, we, it's a special Sunday. It's a welcome, freshman welcoming Sunday. Um, and we have a special guest speaker. I know you guys want to hear me preaching, but we have a good speaker that's coming uh, to preach to us today. He is uh, a pastor and a missionary from Japan, all the way from Japan. Uh, to meet us, and he is the senior pastor from Sukuba Love of Christ uh, Church. It's an international church where Koreans, Japanese, and Chinese, and Eng- uh, English-speaking Americans uh, all gather and worship. So it's, it's an international church. He's a senior pastor there, and he's also a founder of Cross Mission Christian Church, uh, Christian School. Uh, so he's going to come and give us uh, the word of God. So when he comes out, let's give him a big round of applause. I welcome him. Thank you, thank you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay. I've never studied, you know, English abroad. Uh, so, please understand me that my English is not enough for you. But when it comes to Japanese, Arabian may be a little bit more better than you. Oh, hello, Alas. Oh, hello, Alas. Konnichiwa. See what I'm saying? <laughs> okay. <I'll laughs> I really thank God. Thank first, you know, Pastor, Senior Pastor Kim and Pastor All and all of you for welcoming me, having me this wonderful in this wonderful service. And I really thank God for giving great opportunity to share with you what God has done for me in my ministries. And how God is working in the nation of Japan now. But before preaching, uh, I want to show you know, just a video to give you a more better understanding of me and my ministries. Take a look at it.
Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And actually, at the final scene, I want to, I wanted to make part shape, but it became rabbit. <laughs> but I don't want to go today. I really want to give you my warm heart. In Japanese, I please, please give your heart to someone next to you. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And and I'd like to want you to you know welcome my my wonderful friend Jay and Sophie. So they they came from Virginia late last night to see me. So can, please, please, please give them a warm big hand to Jay and Sophie. Thank you, thank you. Let's go into the Bible. In today's scripture, Peter experienced wonderful miracle to walk on the water. How, how did he, he experience the miracle? By just faith? Okay. No. Nothing is impossible for him who believes. I can do it. I can walk on the water by just faith. So let's say he jumps into water. What happened? He definitely drowns. So the wonderful thing that that, that that's the you know the blind faith. That's not true faith. Okay? I can do. I can do. I can do. I can walk on the water. Just jump in the water. He eventually drowns. That's blind faith. How can, how could Peter experience the miracles to walk on the water? It's because he follows the principle of PLO life. PLO life. Okay, what's PLO? Okay. P. P is pray. Have an intimate fellowship with God through prayer. And L, L is listen. If you pray to God, you need to listen to carefully God's voice, God's answer. And what is O? O is obey. You just obey God, whatever He speaks, speaks to you. This is P L O. P. First, Peter prayed, Lord, if it is you, please tell me, come to you to walk on the water. That's prayer. Okay. P 
Prayer is very important. But is it enough? Just by prayer? No, we need it. You know, the second step. Second step is listen. If you listen to Jesus' voice, come. Come. When you pray to God, you have to wait for his voice, his answer. The prayer and answer, listen. But is it enough? No. We need a final step. It's obey. Obey. Always obey. Jesus said, come. But the wind was very strong. And the waves were very rolling. But in spite of the, the fear, Peter stepped out, out of the boat. And then he experienced wonderful miracles to walk on the water. That's P-L-O. Pray, listen, obey. But there is counterfeit approach. That's a P-R-O. What is P-R-O? Okay, P is plan. You make plan for the glory of God. Okay, I'm going to make 100 congregation church this year. I got a goal. What is your what, R? What is run? You run for Jesus. You run hard for the kingdom of God. Work, work, work. And run, run, run. And what is final O? O is, oh my gosh. You failed. And only after failed, you begin to pray. Oh God, I made a plan for you. I've run for your glory day and night. Why didn't you help me? Then God will say this. My son, when did I told, tell you to do that? It's your plan. It's your plan. It's by your strength. You need to first pray to me. And listen to my answer. And just obey. As I told you. Then I will fulfill what I have spoken to you. That's P-L-O love. My brothers and sisters, I'm a pastor. I'm a missionary. But I used to live P-L-O life. I went to Japan in 1996 and became a missionary in 21, 2001. In 2008, I moved from Tokyo to Tsukuba City to found a new church. In Tsukuba City, I planned a church there and had an evangelism in Tsukuba University. I really worked hard. I had a Bible study with Tsukuba University students, disciple to training, day and night. I really worked hard. And within five years, the church was growing. About 70, 70 you know, members attended every Sunday services. And in Japan, there's 8,000 churches. And average of Sunday service attendance for one church is about 35 or 40 members. 70 members in five years, quite, quite successful ministry. And in Tsukuba University students, four students in the PhD course I evangelized them. I had disciples training, train, training with them. And they gave their life 
to God as a full-time missionary. Two Japanese, one Korean, one Chinese. And in five years, God led us to have a new church building. Quite successful. God blessed me a lot. But, but strangely, my father was not happy. Every week, every week, my father was oppressed by the result of ministries. So I, so often I, I got the frustrations, despair, and discouragement. And in 2014, the missionary groups that I was part of had a big trouble. And for one year, I had been through very tough time that I have never experienced in my life. I thought over and over again, quitting being a missionary and leave Japan. But eventually, exactly one year later, God visited me three times. First, in early August, you know, in 2015, a Korean mission team came to our church. And at the Friday night service, they sang the song, A.N.U. For two hours straight away. For two hours. It's from Psalm 17, 4. Would you read together, please? Okay. One thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. They sang this song for two hours straight, not ceasing. this. And through this song, it was like I was awakening after one year of sleeping, spiritual sleeping. That is first visitation from God. And second, in the same month, a pastor came to me and told me, Pastor Cherry, the good man brings good things out of the good sword of him, of the enemy. And the evil man brings evil things out of the evil sword of in him. Pastor Chang, people and circumstance and situation, it's just a trigger to build bomb. It's in our heart. This is why pastors say, I realize that. Oh, people's circumstance. Because for one year, I blamed people. I mumbled about the circumstance around me. Oh, it, 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 those things are just trigger. The real bomb is in me. That is second visitation from God. And, and finally, God came to me on 26th of August, the same month. I was attending a conference. It's, it's, a, it's a, you know, a conference for, you know, the pastor. And the second night, evening sessions, pastor, we go home, go and leave. They didn't preach. Instead of the preaching, 
who showed us a documentary film about a castle was built by Taliban in Afghanistan. But while watching that movie, God realized a miracle. A thought and questions came to my mind. What is the difference between that pastor and me? Oh, yes. His dedication is, was absolutely 100% for God. But mine is different. The man is not. I sat in public. Right? Everything, everything is grace. Everything is your grace, your grace, your grace. But deep in, deep in my heart, I told myself, I can't, I can't. You worked hard, day and night. You also deserve to be praised a little bit. His dedication was for God 100%. But mine was different. Of course, I, I, I've served God very much. But at the same time, I served myself. Self-righteousness. Selfishness. Self, self, self. That was the power. I've served for a man's empty praise and reputations. That was my power. And after the session, I came to God with a prayer. Oh Lord, with this man God in my heart, I can't be anymore as pastor or missionary. Please, please, Remove this down from my heart. And at the time, all of a sudden, God's grace came to me. One day, my son, my love for you is wider than the universe. Do you really think there's no place for you in my huge love? Why did you try to find your place in man's empty reputation and praise? At the moment, all of a sudden, I felt it. A deep boulder that had been oppressing my heart, my soul for 40 years disappeared at once. It was like my heart was, you know, as light as feather. So I felt, you know, real peace of heaven. I felt real joy of heaven. Heaven came to my heart. I've never, I've never experienced the kind of peace and joy all through my life. And then I went to my wife. She was slept in the room. So I said, I told my wife, wake up my wife. Hey, hey, honey. I think Jesus came to me. Jesus came to me. And my wife said, oh, okay, well, very much time. I fell asleep that day. <laughs> but after then, my whole life was totally changed. Totally changed. Since then, I wept and wept for two months. Not by sadness, but by happiness. Not by despair, but by hope and peace and joy from heaven. I felt Jesus really, really strongly. Jesus was moving in my heart. So I confessed again and again. Oh, Jesus, I love you, Jesus. You're so wonderful. You're so beautiful, Jesus. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. 
when my vision is no more for my ministries. My vision is you, Jesus. All I want is more of you, Jesus. Jesus alone. Brothers and sisters, from that time, for seven years, I spent three hours every morning at dawn prayer with Jesus, with joy, with happiness, and peace. I was a pastor. I was a missionary. But I lived all a lot. But after August 6, 2026, God changed my life from PLA life to PLA life. Since then, so many amazing things happened in my life. I just prayed to God. And God told me what I should to do. God told me to start the English and Japanese bilingual service 2017. And as soon as we start the service, a Brazilian sister came to us, joined the service. And during the service, the homosexualist, the homosexualism got healed at once. And God told me to start this first mission Christian school in the church to reach out to the you know, next generation of Japan. The school started with two of my sons two and a half years ago. But God blessed our school, 20 students in two and a half years. I praise the Lord. Especially from this year, God sent us you know, non-believing Japanese family to our school. God liked to share the testimony of Manaka family who became believers by sending their son Kensuke to our school this year. Mrs. Manaka, Kensuke's mother, is a pharmacist. She enrolled her son Kensuke in an expensive private school in Japan, but unfortunately he struggled and he, he could not adapt to the school. Eventually, she found our school website where he came to visit, and Kensuke became our school leader. And one week later, Kensuke parents and Kensuke came to Sunday service. I just thought, wow, they came to the service just to, taste, to say thank you because Japanese is very polite and have, have a very good manner. But they came the next Sunday again. So I asked them, how do you come to service again? And Kensuke, the father, he told me, Pastor, so thank you, thank you. Smiles back to my son's face. Arigatou gozaimasu. Oksan san, arigatou gozaimasu. And Kensuke's mother was crying beside him. And, and the father said to this, Oh, Pastor, Your message of that Sunday was really touching me. So I read it all in my notes. And, and I tried to put it in my practice. So I told them, okay, your son changed in our school just one week. And, and you're touched by the word of God in the very first service in your life. I feel that God is calling you. God is calling your family 
So I explained the gospel of Jesus Christ. And when you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior and King, yes, you will get lost. So they all receive Jesus Christ all together. Hallelujah. And then, and, and amazing things happen again and again. Princess mother, Mrs. Malaka, she told me, Pastor, I've never tried for the last 10 years because I was so tired. And, and I was really dried up emotionally. But it's strange. Every time I come to the church during the service, I cannot stop crying. And a few, a few weeks later, and Kenske's mother also told me, Sister, Pastor, I've very painful on my shoulder for a long time. But God help me. God help my shoulder. Since I came to, ch- came to the church during the service, it, it, it was like, you know, big rock on my shoulder. The pain disappeared. It's amazing, Pastor. And a few weeks later, she also told me, Pastor, it's amazing. My, my, my right hand was numb for a long time. It was like you know, I'm wearing you know, three rubber gloves on my hand. But I'm holding my hand. So now I'm wearing just one glove, not two. It's amazing. So God's miracle of the family was again and again, again and again. And I want to show the Malakas families and my sister Ayana's testimony a bit later. Thank you. 
Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 The elements that have pulled my pastor sister Erica's heart and her shoulder and his hand, her hand, and healed his son Tasco and saved all families in three months. And just three months after coming to the church, they got baptized on this Easter of this year. God is saving, saving Japanese family through our church, through our school. And God is healing children through the school. The more they got healed, the more they get smart. So every year, our students are winning the prize in the essay competition in the Ibaraki Prefecture in Japan. One of the important, you know, purpose of that, my, my, my trip in America is to you know, find dedicated teachers to teach English in our, in our school. You know, Japan has 500 Christianity history. The population of the Christianity is still under the 1%. For that church, it's just remaining. 0.4% out of the whole populations. And it is said that you know, 3,000 churches will disappear within 20 years because of aging problem. Japanese pastors, the average age of Japanese pastors is late 60s. 3,000 churches will disappear. 20 years. So I believe that's why God started the First Mission Christian School in our church to raise the next generation in Japan and save the next generation of Japanese church. Please pray for Japan. And if God allowed, please come to Japan as a mission trip, okay? Japanese is good. The Japanese is better. <laughs> and, 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 and our diet, Oishi and Sushi. Dear brothers and sisters, which do you want? PL life or PL life? Today, maybe some of you came to this service praying for. God's plan for you, your life. Oh God, I want to follow you. Please teach me your plan for my life. And today, some of you, maybe listen to God's speaker, God's voice through this sermon. Come. Come. Walk in the water. Get out of the boat. You're cozy. You're safe. You're comfortable boat. Get out of the boat. And go out to the world and preach the gospel. Stretch out your hand to those who is drowning. Just like Jesus did. And today, if you feel that God is speaking to you, please try to just obey whatever he speaks to you. Just obey. The past John Oxford write what a famous book. If you want to walk on the water, you have to get out of the boat. You have to get out of the boat. Yes, the wind is so strong. The waves are 
run in front of you. But if you step out of your boat, then you will experience God's miracle of walking on water. What are the financial problems? What are the relations? What are the children that's facing problems? What are the your future plan? What are the requesting from God? You walk on the water. That's God's promise. If you want, walk on the water. You have to get out of your boat. Some people only focus on Peter's failing. Peter's falling into the water. Oh, look at that. He lost, he lost faith. He lost faith. So he fell into the water, blah, 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 blah. But think about it. Even if he walked only one ten meters He's the first human being in the human history to walk on the water. Not focus on failing, but focus on trying, trying, trying. Okay, of course, the God's calling is not easy. Sometimes you may fall into the water. as I experienced 2013. But just because you fall into the water, it doesn't mean you fail in your life. Because, because it will be a good opportunity to experience the hand of God to save you from the water. I also fell into the water 2015, 2013. Just one year later, I experienced the hand of God to save from the water. And my life has changed totally from PLO to PLO. My brothers and sisters, God is the God who is speaking to you. God is speaking to you at this moment. Just pray to God. Have an intimate fellowship with God through your prayer. And listen carefully what God is speaking to you. And just do whatever God has spoken to you. Then you will experience miracle of walking in the water. Miracle after miracles will follow you. That's what God said to you. This wonderful afternoon. And then you go out to the world. You stretch out your hand to those who are drowning in the water and save them. I bless in the name of Jesus from now on. Miracles after miracles will follow you in your life. Amen. Let's pray.